spent the last couple of days looking around for a beetle body for this and discovered that Playmobil apparently makes a 124, what they call a 124. And it's pretty spot on as far as wheelbase goes. Okay, let's see how far I get before the battery dies. So obviously if you clicked on this video, you're about to watch me turn my D90 into potentially a Volkswagen Beetle. I have not done really much more research than watching a couple of videos on uh, the type of VW Beetle body that I bought. I watched somebody do a conversion on that and then just did some wheelbase measurements and stuff like that. And hopefully with a couple of adjustments, we can get this good old fashioned SCX24, which is quite literally the first SCX24 that I ever bought almost three years ago. And uh, February of two and a half years ago, I guess it was, bought this RC four wheel drive D90 body and put that on a Jeep uh, Rubicon original, one of the JLUs that they came out with. And it has since, uh, it just runs, you know, just standard length, uh, links, steel drive shafts. It's got a 55 turn motor in it. This was also long before Holmes Hobbies or anybody else started doing that. Um, I think this is like the ECX barrage motor or something along those lines. Anyway, blah, 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 blah. Um, I have kind of wanted to turn this into a Baja bug. Let's get right to it. Let me open this box and let's take a peek. I haven't actually seen this myself, so I don't even really know what's, what we're looking at here. Uh, it just showed up a little while ago, and so I'm pretty excited to see myself exactly what this is all about. It is a toy kit, apparently official, officially licensed, from Playmobil. Slide that across, make a nice little noise there. Yeah, it seems like it actually might be a usable roof rack if I'm... I'm building a Baja, basically, is kind of what I want. Tires are definitely unusable. They might be... I guess decent for some other scale build at some point in time. They almost look slightly, I don't want to say they're one inch, maybe just slightly smaller than one inch. Maybe with a little bit of trimming you can be able to get those uh, to work. Here are characters. Oh, the legs fold. Okay, legs move. Heads turn, arms move, so on and so forth. Oh, this guy, he's got some, we're going to have to open this up. Oh boy. He's got gold shades on and everything. So it comes with the whole patio umbrella. None of that stuff's going to be of any use for the purposes intended here. But I don't know. These drivers, they just look a little too cartoonish, a little toy-like to me, I think, in order to really want to use this stuff. But they're not bad, you know? I mean, I guess if you were into having some cartoonish characters running your, your vehicles, then you might have, this might be an option for you. I kind of like them a little bit more realistic. This, however, the surfboard, I can see that with the Baja bug finally officially done up. It might work. It might work. Random bits and pieces that I probably don't even need to talk about. Really, why did I even bust this bag open? You're probably asking yourself. I don't know. Okay, so this is the roof rack. And that must be the patio or the umbrella stick. Yes, of course. Oh, tailgate, hatch, rear, rear hatch. There's the roof. All right, so it's a pretty decent color. Um, oh, lights, oh, light buckets, okay, sure. I think, right? No, they're already in there. So what is that stuff? Oh, bottles, bottles, I mean, oh geez. Party time. Wow, this is a fairly heavy chassis underneath. I'm after just the body, of course. It does have an interior. I might, I might run it as is, uh, but one thing I like to generally do as soon as I get a body and see what the potential is that we're looking at, I could see it working. I might just need to probably, I don't know, I could extend, I might have to extend the front a little bit or maybe do a little bit of trimming, but it's not going to look too bad, I think, once it's officially sitting on there and ready to go. In fact, it might not look too bad at all. I'm going to put some little bit larger tires on there. We'll see. Actually, those don't look bad either. So, get that a little bit better. Yeah, I think it's going to look... Well, it's not the finished ride height, but you get the idea. Uh, I got the interior removed out of this thing. I have not trimmed the wheel wells yet. I think I'm actually fairly happy with the wheel base itself. I think once once the wheels are trimmed, or excuse me, the wheel wells are trimmed, the, um, everything is actually going to sit, I think, just right. The interior is really heavy. I just weighed it. It's like 119 grams or something crazy like that. 
yeah, 118.74 grams. So tons of plastic sitting in here that's probably not going to get used. I really, I mean, a lot of people will probably ding me on not using like the inner fender wells or something like that. Maybe I'll try and find a way to cut those in. Um, but the way this is going to sit, the fender wells are going to, they'd be, I don't know if they'd, they would probably interfere with some stuff. We'll see. I don't know. This isn't going to be like a total scale rig. Um, I wanted this because I wanted a functional Baja. Sort of built in the same vein that my uh, Gen 7 with the Proline Super Beetle body went on. So my hope would be that I should be able to somehow use the original hinge, which might mean that I'll need to um, glue this on and then find a way to screw through this with the hinge piece somewhere in here to see if I can get it. It also might mean that I need to dremel away some of like this material right here. Sorry, I had most of that off the camera. So I would probably want to take away a lot of this material, which would open up the back of this. And of course, like I said, after gluing this in, just to make sure that it's going to stay put, um, I don't have any need to ever open this. I'm not sure if I want to use magnets to hold the whole body on. I, like I said, I want to use the hinge. Uh, because I think it's a really good solid way for the back of this thing to stay put and that's that's how I did the D90 And it worked out great. So I'm kind of hoping maybe I'll have the same luck with this So let me get some stuff out of the way Since I just so hurriedly changed the battery after battery dying and just turned the camera back on and started filming So anyway, let me do a couple things. I'll get back to it and show you my progress. magnet away we go material this thing is gonna look so cool once it's finally body right height and everything is is properly adjusted I think it's gonna look pretty sweet uh, I it may get a paint job I might not I might just weather it because I, I absolutely love the color honestly um, but yes, let me, let me trim some things. Let me do some cutting and stuff like that. I think just based upon preliminary appearances here that once that's sitting a little lower, once this is glued into place, I might need to use some longer screws, but I should be able to get through that. Maybe have to use some spacers or something along those lines. If that fails, you know, there's always the magnets. Um, magnets will certainly work just fine, but again, I would like to avoid that if possible. It would be great to not have to use magnets on this build. They add just a bunch of weight where I don't want it, and it's also kind of a pain in the butt because they come unstuck at the worst times. Anyway, like I said, let me do some more work on this thing. I'm already totally in love with what's going on here. I did a little bit of trimming and I just wanted to do a test fit. I am ever so pleased with how this is already looking. I'm not 100% sure. I'm concerned about the wheelbase differences. It is like almost exactly an eighth of an inch short. I did a measurement of the factory uh, axle to axle versus the SCX24 chassis. And while the SCX24 chassis is just a hair shorter, I mean, it's it's so negligible, I just don't know if I'm going to care or not. Um, so I just have a little bit more. This really is just <clears throat> absolutely perfect where the, uh, the running boards ended up being where I ended up taking out the factory uh, running boards that come on these. Here, let me show you. So if you pull these out from the side, um, what that reveals is the two little tabs holes that these actually fit in. And this is almost the exact same size as where the kicks rock sliders fit on these. Um, and so I think 
based upon what I'm seeing so far, I need to, obviously, I'm going to adjust the ride height lower. I need to take a little bit of material off the back, and this should sit a tiny bit lower. Plus, I'm going to open up the wheel wells a lot more and uh, give it give it a little bit more room to move. Right now, I still got a little bit of contact on the back side of that one, but I'll fix that problem. So, it's getting there, I, and I'm liking it. I really, really am liking it a lot, uh, and I think it's going to work out well. So it's going to be about the same weight, I think, as what the D90 is, but it's going to be a lot less top heavy because I don't think it's as tall. So I'll get back here in a second and I'll show you some progress. All right, as previously mentioned, I am going to take, uh, need to take a little bit of material away from the tabs on the back of this right here. But then also I've noticed too uh, that the JLU bumper sort of hinders how this sits as well. So uh, it's a little bit wider than the body, so it's gonna need to probably just, I think just for safety's sake, just I'm gonna take this off right here and right here and leave just mainly, you know, the center part of this to be able to sit a little better uh, and interface with the body a little bit more. I think once that's gone and this is allowed to sit down on there a little bit more, that will actually put this piece, I think, directly in contact with the hinge at which point I should be able to make good use of that. If I can't use the hinge, I am not upset. Let me get that back center of the camera. If I can't use the hinge, I'm not going to be upset by that at all. I think there's a multitude of different ways that I could probably mount this thing on here and feel pretty good about it. Not limited to maybe somehow trying to incorporate the uh, the rock sliders as part of that that system. So uh, let me continue on and I'll get back to you. This is already just looking great. I, I love it already. It's, it's awesome. So here we go. Okay, here is where I'm at with this thing right now. He's not really quite to scale. I mean, these tires look enormous next to him. Maybe he's maybe he's scale standing next to him, I guess. I don't know. He even seems short next to a beetle if you really like got down to it. Anyway, <coughs> that's not why I turned the camera back on. Uh, as you can see, I have done some trimming. I'm going to neaten things up a little bit here, but as far as being roughed in, we are pretty close. Uh, you know, you can sort of, once I, I I'm going to drop this back down too. I'm going to probably make it ride about somewhere in there, I think, I think, I don't know exactly. Uh, but there may be some contact issues up front I might need to deal with. Uh, 
might need to take a little bit more of the fenders out. I'm hoping not too much. You know, I really kind of want to leave, obviously, the whole general gist of this thing. But I want it to also be able to crawl um, without too much interference. And so uh, I don't really want to have too many limitations on that. Can I zoom in while I'm filming? I don't believe I can. No. So... Uh, I am very happy so far with how this is turning out. Um, for a quick idea that I pretty much had, I think, starting, I don't know, sometime around yesterday and scrambled around for a couple days ago, not yesterday, excuse me, feels like yesterday. But a few days ago, I, well, I see a lot of people like building some, some beetles and stuff like that. And uh, since I did my Gen 7 a couple years ago and built my, my Super Beetle, that 73, um, and we used to actually have a 73 Super Beetle, too, once upon a time uh, when I was a kid. And we got into an accident and took the right rear fender off of it. Um, we got uh, sideswiped by somebody merging onto a highway in Peoria. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. Oh, it looks like I'm having some fitment issues, and who knows where that's coming from. But I need this to sit all the way down. Got to find out where it's keeping that from happening. But basically, this is being friction held on here, and hopefully, I can get this to function and stay functional. But I don't think I probably want to stop the camera and maybe refocus on this. But basically, what's happening here is that I've got this sort of locked underneath the tabs of the rock sliders. And I believe if if I'm really nice to it, each time I try and take it on and off of there, um, it might hold up for a little while. I might have I might have to take make some adjustments. I think I can make some adjustments. Like if I pull this one in a little bit more, which is something I'm probably going to try and do next here shortly. So that is uh, pretty much going to be a nice feature about this that that I think I'm going to try and get away with using for a little while, unless somehow it just fails. Um, I took a little bit of the height uh, up on these. This stuck down just a little bit more. Um, and so I ground that so it was flat. I don't want to take any more of this away. This is what's holding on to the lower part here. Those tabs are basically now essentially part of what are you know, the mechanism that's going to hold this in place when it's, when it's a, you know, fully functional. And like I said, all I need to do is just loosen up this nut right here, the screw of this nut, and then uh, kind of push that in a little bit and I should be able to get a little bit more tension out of that to hold that side. And I think as far as like that goes, that's at least going to hold that on there and it should work pretty well. Let me uh, zoom in a little bit better here. Alright, so now you're up a little closer into what I'm talking about and you can kind of see more of what I'm saying. Uh, so these tabs here had uh, basically another, another level that came in that I probably should have left, but it wasn't doing any, wasn't serving any purpose as far as like holding this together the way it is right now. So, um, but yeah, for for what it's worth, it's it's holding. And that's pretty much the point of release, which as far as I'm concerned, that would happen probably with magnets, I think. Um, and I can adjust that, I believe, by making adjustments to the sliders, the rock sliders. I'm just hoping for the best on that. It's no guarantee. I will let you know more about that in the future. Um, I just want to avoid, I think, using magnets on the front, and I want to avoid, I think, using the hinge in the back, although I'm not opposed to doing it. After trimming and everything underneath, that pretty much sits... If you can see flush right underneath there, that just tucks up very, very close underneath. So in regards to your gains or losses, yes, you are going to lose a tiny little bit of descent angle on the back with this. However, that's a small price to pay and you could probably trim some of this off if you do end up using... Uh, the rear bumper, of course, you're going to lose a fair amount more. But if you want that look and you want that bumper to be on there, which, you know, it doesn't look bad. I 
favorite toolkit from iFixit. Now I've probably tightened it up so much I'll never be able to, to get it removed. No, it's not. It's fine. But that might be a little excessive. Make sure it's even, I guess. And this is a four millimeter on the back side of this, so why I'm not using a four millimeter, I don't know. And for anyone curious, I glued on a heat sink a long time ago onto this motor, and I don't know, I'm kind of a firm believer in stuff like that. I think it helped. Definitely never had any issues with that little motor overheating. Not that they do very often. But folks, I believe that this method of holding this on here, oh my God, this is an absolute 100% positive total method to be able to hold that thing on there by using the Kix rock sliders. So if you want to do this job, that might be an option for you to get it done. Oh, I kind of cut a little bit away, a little too much on the rear wheel wells. I sort of wish I would have left. Ah, oh, that's too bad. You see what I'm saying? It doesn't look bad. I probably should have been a little more. Let's see what I can do by dropping this down a little bit, see if I can ride a little lower. I'll probably have to change springs in this. I have gold springs from the Injora telescoping shocks using the gold ones that have been cut in half because the D90 body is incredibly heavy, so I wanted uh, some rebound without too much hopping around anywhere. I wanted to ride kind of low, at least proper, I should say. Kind of the same with this. I want a little bit of shock function. Oh, there we go. Simply dropping it down definitely helps a lot. It doesn't make it look too bad, honestly. It's It's got a ton of droop, you know? And the cool thing is, is like, if you watch the wheelbase on these, when you see them, how short they are like this, and then they grow, you know, probably about a half a centimeter or so from top to bottom. So, you know, I'm not at all unhappy with how that looks in terms of my only dissatisfaction. Like I said, it's just having probably taken away a little bit too much material. I didn't really quite take that much away on that side. I wish the other side sort of looked like this one. I think that's a tiny bit better. It's hard to notice, but you can see it. See how that tire fits a little bit better in there than it does on that side. You can really see it, that, I, that I took a little bit too much away on this side. Got a little tiny aggressive, tiny bit aggressive on that one. It's not as quiet as a brushless rig, but it's got all the heart a crawler could want, you know. Um, and I think it's, I think it, honestly, I like the looks of this thing better than I do the D90. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Uh, I think it's got the D90 beat by a long shot. I'm interested in seeing what else I can do to this thing. I want to get the roof rack built on it. I mean, it's got, it's got the motor it needs. It's got the wheels and tires that it needs. Um, I'm probably going to add some more black to it um, but so as I mentioned previously I think I spent the last couple days looking around for a beetle body for this and discovered that Playmobil apparently makes a 124 what they call a 124 and it's pretty spot on as far as wheelbase goes SCX 24 ends up being about of an eighth of an inch short even extended running JLU in the back and C10 up front for links um, but it's okay. I might even be able to extend it just a little bit more if I really wanted to, but I'm not entirely unhappy with how it looks at the moment. I dropped it down just a little bit. I don't want it sitting all the way into the wheel wells, but I wanted it to be pretty close. This side, admittedly, like I said before, I screwed up. I got a little overzealous on this side and took a tiny little bit too much. You can see it, but it doesn't look terrible. I'll probably film from this side mostly. 
So uh, what else? I've got a couple parts in paint right now. Bumpers and stuff. I am going to hit the mirrors as well. I kind of forgot about those in my first round. I'll look at O-ring. Um, who knows? That probably came from one of these shocks, to be honest with you. I should probably go through and check that. So anyway, uh, what else? This was probably one of the easier body mods I think I've ever done. It was just a matter of committing to doing it. Um, thankfully, you know, if you have a Dremel, that's going to make your life so much easier. Um, what else? Oh, I've got the roof rack in paint right now, too. Um, I have not done anything with sticking this down, which I need to here sometime soon. I am also going to do detail painting on this as well. I want to do uh, the gutters and probably try and figure out a way to... Basically, I'm going to look online and see what a lot of these look like. Um, but I think I'm going to stick with sort of a black and blue uh, theme. And then try and silver paint some stuff. Not too much uh, because I just don't want it to run. Silver is a tough color to detail with. If you mess up, then it just goes everywhere. Uh, black might just be a little bit easier. However, it too just gets all over everything, especially since it's a high contrast color, blah, blah, blah. Um, and the only reason I say that is because there's a nice silver pinstripe with the Carmen Ghia logo down at the bottom with the VW at the top. And then, of course, the accents uh, with the small uh, lights up front, which are non-functional, but they're there. Uh, what else? So these are not actual light buckets up in the fenders on the top sides. However, the front headlights are. Um, the back, I have discovered, actually has a small little pocket. So if I order LEDs that are small enough, I should be able to get some LEDs put in there and then I will be able to snap these into place and that way these will have, this will have tail lights because essentially if you're going to go this far as to build something like this, um, it, it should definitely have uh, tail lights as well as headlights. So um, it might take a couple days for me to get those in. And uh, I think I have two yellow headlights, which I'm going to use for the front because I do like using yellow on some of these vintage builds like this. That way they look a little bit more realistic. So, uh, but as pleased as can be with how this has turned out, I got to take a tiny little bit more out of the corners of these so they don't look quite so harsh um, and just neaten things up in general. But just overall, uh, I think how that, that looks right there, you know, I just couldn't be, couldn't be happier. So hopefully you guys like this one too. Um, yeah, you got any questions about this? I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. You know, like I said, if you have a Dremel and you have an idea that you want to get this thing on here, it's a surefire fit. Um, one of the best parts about this that I discovered as I was doing it, because my original intent was to just mount to the bumper using, of course, the original hinge mount, which is still here. And if it comes down to it, I, I can use that. But I think for for all it's worth right now, I don't see the need in having to go with any extra work and trying to get that set up. So with that said, here's how this ended up working out. Um, by taking the original running boards off of here, it opens up two spots um, that need to be ground away. And as you grind those away, then uh, this opens up positions where, you know, there's a whole chunk of material that's basically gone where these kicks running boards can now sit. So I discovered and was completely unaware that this was going to be an option. But as I was grinding away and, and f seeing how much material was left and decided to put this on here, it ends up being like the exact same width, maybe about an eighth of an inch or a sixteenth of an inch of material sticks in right from the corner, just past where the kicks running boards are. So this is very thankfully the same on both sides if you're careful as to how much you grind away. Now there is a slight bit of adjustment because you can adjust these running boards or rock sliders in and out to be able to get a little bit more tension on how much it sits inside of these little plastic uh, root. Once you get all of that ground away and you can get the body to sit on there properly, then you can sort of get an idea of how much you want to take away from the wheel wells. That way it sits you know, properly once it's all done. Um, what I ended up doing in the back is because there's two bits of material that come down from this portion on the inside 
that make contact with the bumper, those got ground away. And I thought I was going to have to take a lot more off the back end. Specifically, I thought I was going to have to cut the bumper away in order to be able to get this to seat properly. Such was not the case. It just sat right down on there. I don't want it to sit really any lower than this anyway because it means I'd have to take more material away from here. I would lose my ability to have this clip on with the running boards. And if I want it to sit with any more droop at all, um, I probably will just simply take the coil springs out of here or find some way to run a shorter stud or excuse me, piston on the shocks or something like that. But honestly, I, am, I don't see changing this in any way. I am so pleased with how it's turned out. I love the look of it. This is exactly how I wanted it. This is exactly how I envisioned it looking, and this is exactly how I wanted it to turn out, and thankfully it has. So um, with that, I can't wait to get out and run it. That's going to be an awesome time. I mean, come on, look at the KR3s. Look what they do to this, you know? They just, I think everything about it just really sets it off. So uh, the roof rack is also in paint right now. I'm painting that black. Front and rear bumpers are getting done in black. Uh, which probably means I'll do the door handles in black, maybe this body line in black, or this body line in black, and this one in silver to match the hood line, which I think is traditional. Um, there would also be from the factory, this probably right here would be a chrome ring, as well a chrome ring. I don't know if I'm going to take it there. I kind of like this sort of kind of aftermarket baby blue color. Ours was a deep metallic blue, if I'm not mistaken, like a navy, metallic navy blue, probably not even that, just called it navy blue, but it most likely was metallic. Uh, I was too young to remember that kind of thing. Anyway, um, <clears throat> I don't really re remember seeing too many of this, you know, sky blue, even though they probably were out there. Um, maybe those colors were kind of regional or something like that, but I certainly never saw one of the Midwest, which is where we had ours. So anyway, uh, what else can I ramble on about? Um, yeah, you know, I think this whole kit from Playmobil, excuse me, from Amazon, made by Playmobil, uh, was like 25 bucks or something like that. Um, that's cheaper than what you're going to pay for a 3D printed body, and you're going to get an injection molded plastic body from Germany that is a licensed product um, that is every bit as strong. Oh, by the way, the mirror, the glass in this is, or the plastic, I should say, but the, the windows in this um, are absolutely perfect. Nice, sturdy, sturdy glass, sturdy plastic in there, including the corner windows. So the sides are open, but everything else, of course, is clear and has windows. So nice little touch there as uh, well. I think I've rambled on enough about this. I think I've got, oh, I don't know, probably about an hour's worth of video footage to edit down into, I don't know, a 20, 25 minute video to hopefully make this somewhat interesting. So I had a chance to run it. It runs extremely well, as expected. So that's that. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you on the next one. Take it easy out there.